Hi guys. Today I am reading Miss Nelson is Back by Henry Allen with illustrations by James Marshall and permission of Houghton Mifflin Company. Boy, are you ready? This is the sequel, so it comes after Miss Nelson is missing. So. One Friday, Miss Nelson told her class that she was going to have her tonsils out. I'll be away next week, she said, and I expect you to behave. Yes, Miss Nelson, said the kids in 207. But at recess, it was another story. Wow, said the kids. Well, Miss Nelson is away. We can really act up. Not so fast, said a big kid from room 309. Haven't you heard of Viola Swamp? Who? asked Miss Nelson's kid. Miss Swamp is the meanest substitute in the whole world, said the big kid. And nobody acts up when she's around. Ooh, said Miss Nelson's kids. She's a real witch, said the big kid. Ooh said Miss Nelson's kid. I'll just bet you get the swamp, said the big kid. On Monday morning, Miss Nelson's kids were all in their seats. They were very nervous. Some of them had not slept well all weekend. I hope we don't get the swamp, said one kid. And they heard footsteps in the hall. Slowly, the knob turned. Everybody held their breath, and the door opened, and it was Mr. Blanchworth, the principal. I shall personally take over this class, he said. Miss Nelson's kids were so relieved. Oh. But they soon learned that Mr. Blanchworth it was not a lot of fun. All morning, Mr. Blansworth tried to amuse the kids with his corny card tricks. Oh, brother, said the class. That afternoon, Mr. Blansworth showed the class his favorite shadow puppets or shadow pictures. This is kid stuff, said the class. The next day, Mr. Blansworth demonstrated his favorite bird calls. They were not a success. And for two days, Mr. Blandworth showed slides of his goldfish, Lucille. Miss Nelson's kids had never been so bored. While dusting erasers in the schoolyard, three of the ringleaders in 207 discussed the situation. Something would have to be done, they said. We must get rid of Blandsworth. And so they hatched a plot. After school, they painted and sewed and borrowed some old clothes, and they practiced some very difficult stunt work in the yard. The next day, they weren't in class. Too bad, said Mr. Blandsworth. They'll miss all the excitement. Mr. Blandsworth was about to show the class his collection of ballpoint pens from all over the world when someone came to the door. Slowly, the knob turned and the door opened. Oh, look, said the class. Miss Nelson is back. A tall, and lumpy, Miss Nelson tottered into the room. Mr. Blandworth was surprised. You're back earlier than we expected, he said. The tall and lumpy Miss Nelson didn't speak. Uh, said the kids, her throat must still be sore. Are you sure you're well enough? asked Mr. Blandworth. She's sure, said the whole class. Well, in that case, said the principal, I'll be getting back to the office. Nice to have you back, Miss Nelson. And he left the room. Hot dog, said the kids. 
We got rid of Mr. Blandsworth. Now we can do just as we please. And at the stroke of 10, the kids from 207 left the building. No one stopped them. They went straight to the movies where they saw The Monster That Ate Chicago. Twice. This is really living, they said. Afterwards, they went to Lulu's, where they stopped themselves silly. But soon, they made a serious mistake. Heading back to school, they passed Miss Nelson's house. Miss Nelson couldn't believe her eyes. Those are my kids, she said in a scratchy voice. What are they doing out of school? And who's that with them? So Miss Nelson telephoned Mr. Blandworth to find out what was going on. You're not Miss Nelson, said Blandworth. Miss Nelson is back. And he hung up. Can't fool me, he said. Hmm, said Miss Nelson. Something will have to be done. And she went to her closet. Back in room 207, Miss Nelson's kids were spending an agreeable afternoon. They were very pleased with themselves. We should do this more often, they said. They did not notice the figure in the hall. Slowly, the knob turned, and the door opened. My name is Miss Fiona Swamp, said the lady in a scratchy voice. Yipes, said the kids. It's the Swamp. That's right, said Miss Swamp, and I'm here to whip this class back into shape. Get back to those desks on the double. The kids did, or the class did, as it was told. The big kid from 309 was right. Miss, real, Miss Swamp was a real witch, and she knew how to get results. The class did a whole week's work of work in no time. We shouldn't have gotten rid of Blandsworth, they said. Pipe down to the Swamp, or... Just then, something under a desk attracted her attention. It was a mask. Aha, said Miss Swamp. So that's your little game. And she tried on the mask just as Mr. Blandsworth came into the room. Miss Nelson, said Mr. Blandsworth, I'm of the opinion that someone has been impersonating you. Uh-oh, whispered the kids. You don't say, said Miss Swamp. Probably just some kids acting out. I'm sure it won't happen again. And Mr. Blansworth left. And it won't, will it, said Miss Swamp to the class. Because the Swamp will be watching. A minute later, Miss Nelson appeared. Oops. I'm back, she said. Hot dog, cried the kids. Are we glad to see you? Did you have fun with Mr. Blandsworth? Asked Miss Nelson. Uh, said the kids. They decided not to mention Miss Viola Swamp. But they wondered why Miss Nelson hadn't seen her in the hall. And that's the end. A nice silly story. There's one more Miss Nelson story, and maybe I'll do that next time. Well, have a great day, guys. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!